Thank you very much. The first thing I'd like to say is it's a fantastic honour to be able to uh, speak here today, so thank you very much to Cass, and it's particularly exciting to be speaking here, obviously, during Trustees Week. So there's a few things that I'm going to take you through. Obviously, I haven't got very long. I'm going to give a bit of an introduction to myself and to my organisation, which is a very small organisation. I'm going to explain why young people getting involved on boards is a good thing for them and a good thing for charities. Um, and about other areas of diversity. I'm going to talk a little and just touch on how to bring some young trustees onto your board, although that will be different depending on your charity. And then I'm going to talk about how bringing younger people onto your board or increasing the diversity of your board actually brings out wider issues um, around the way in which build, uh, boards operate and skills auditing and general governance issues that I think are a really key part of, of diversity. And lastly, I want to finish on a, a positive note about how I think these are quite exciting times for trustee diversity. So the first thing, to explain a bit about my own situation, um, when I came to London, I was trying to look for full-time work and I couldn't find anything that I was... I, I couldn't get a job that I, was something I really wanted to do. Um, I wanted to get involved in my local community, so I, I went along to a charity in Islington called Centre 404, um, and I joined a, a subcommittee there. And after I'd been there for about half a year, um, I was asked by the chief executive, Linda McGowan, who's actually in the audience, I'm very happy to say, um, I was asked by Linda to join the board. And at first when she asked me, I was obviously very flattered, but I was absolutely amazed. I had absolutely no idea that younger people, and I was kind of a younger person, um, were able to join a board in any capacity. And over time, what I began to realise is that if I didn't know that, perhaps other people didn't know that too. Perhaps I was just ignorant, so I needed to find that out. And what I did was I, I went to um, an NCVO conference, I looked around the room, I thought there's very few younger people uh, around, um, I looked at the charity commission's figures, and Sam Younger obviously made so many of my points for me this morning uh, about, for example, the average age of trustees <coughs> being 57 in England and Wales, according to the Charity Commission's research. And I realised that perhaps it would be a good idea both to explain to people the benefits of being a trustee, and particularly just to let younger people know that it's possible for them to be engaged in trusteeship. So I started up a group on LinkedIn, which spread to other forms of social media, and what I found was that there was, in fact, a great appetite out there, both for younger people who didn't know that they could be involved and wanted these opportunities, um, and for charities who not only wanted to diversify their boards, but simply wanted more trustees to have a, a wider pool from which to recruit. Um, I want to say at the outset that it's not that I think in any way that younger people make better trustees. Some younger people have particular skills, some younger people wouldn't make good trustees. But the point is, is that <coughs> if we're cutting out a whole segment of the population at a time during a recession and difficult economic times, when charities are needed more than ever, good governance is needed more than ever, we really can't afford, I think, to cut down on those people. So why is it good for young people? Well, for a lot of young people, it's an opportunity to get involved at a level that will probably be beyond, be beyond their current pay grade if they're lucky enough to have a job. It's also an example of them being able to put back into something they're very passionate about. Young people are passionate about many charities, many causes, and it's a way for them to be able to make a real difference. And of course, for charities, there's the general point about, that I made about charities having a wider pool of people, but also, typically, younger people might bring certain skills, for example, in social media, which has already been spoken about, that not only can be very beneficial to a charity, but it can actually save a charity quite a lot of money, potentially, in quite difficult times. So I would say that it's a real win-win for charities and for younger people. However, I'd say that younger people is only one area of diversity that could be looked at. There's so many others. So gender is one, disability, ethnicity, sexuality, background. And I really love the point that was made earlier about personality. We just want to have boards made up of different types of people with different experiences and different backgrounds. 
So if we look at how to bring young trustees onto your board, I'll give a particular example. Not very far from here, Oval, is an organisation called Street League, um, which uses uh, football and training to get young people who aren't in education or training or a job um, back, back into those things. And they wanted to bring on some younger trustees, and they asked me to support them in this. What they actually did was they took some service users, some younger people who had been through their program and who had got back into work, and I did some board training with them to basically prepare them for, for going to their first board meeting. And one of the things we found was, was that it was fantastic to have younger people who can speak with real confidence and passion about what the programs actually meant to them. And I think, and we've just had a Meet the Funder session a little earlier, if, for example, you are a youth charity and a funder sees that you have some younger people on your board, it's an easy way to show that you really believe in the things that you're talking about. Um, so that's one way of involving people. However, I would like to say that there's no one way to involve younger people. There's no one magic formula. What's important, though, is just that you have the ambition to do so and that you try to recruit outside your networks of friends and general contacts. So a lot, so many younger people don't know that it's possible for them to be trustees, that just having that conversation with them and enabling a few young people to come forward is going to mean that hopefully there's a snowball effect of involvement as people see role models taking on these board positions. Related to this, though, is a problem of retention. So you have the problem of recruitment, and we've talked quite a lot about recruitment, but it's a problem of retention as well for all trustees, not just young trustees. One thing might be if a younger person goes onto a board, um, if they're the only younger person on there, if they're treated as a token, and this was something, again, we were talking about service users earlier, that, that's possibly not going to work. And also, they might feel that they need to be supported with a bit of um, upskilling or training, um, if they have a good induction process, if they get to meet the key staff, if they feel properly included in the organisation, these are all things that mean it's much more likely that they're going to stay. But related to this is, I would use the phrase, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Actually, this isn't just about younger people. All these issues about induction, about training, about proper recruitment, are just as important for a trustee, whatever their age might be. And you might find, for example, that you have people on the, your board who would love some financial training and don't actually know how to ask you. And if you did some training for some younger trustees, for example, coming on, you could give them a little nudge and say, oh, there's this session running, maybe you'd like to come along as well. So that's one way to, to get over that issue. And finally, I'd like to conclude by saying I think these are really exciting times. Um, Trustees Week itself is growing quite a lot, and uh, along with colleagues, I'm one of the people on the advisory board that the Charity Commission set up for the week. Um, I think although there's so much that needs to be done around issues of diversity, what it means is, is every time we make a small start, every time a board becomes more diverse, we're setting something in motion that will hopefully mean that in the future, board diversity is something we barely speak about. I, I hope one day we might get to that point. And I'd like to conclude by a poem that I wrote sort of for Trustees Week. This sort of shows how geeky I am about the issue of trustees. And what, what is particularly geeky is that I'm going to give you the cut-down version. I'm only going to read half. It's based on uh, Roger Kipling's If, which is my, my favourite poem, but it's about trustees. So here's just a section from it. If you can keep your head when all about you have read the briefings five times to your nun... If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you and vote for an action when you're the only one. If you can bear to hear a new agenda topic when your stomach's rumbling and you've a train to catch. If the finance sheets are making you myopic but you're determined that they've met their match. If you keep fellow members smiling when your own is wearing thin and hang in there when the pressure's piling and take your setbacks on the chin if you can fill the unforgiving meeting with two hours' worth of good work done, yours is the earth and everything that's in it. And which is more, you'll be a trustee, my son. <laughs> or daughter, because I don't like the ending.